Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole. Today's video is sneak peek week three for low impact exercises. I reviewed five workout programs that are available to me that are low impact. Description of each exercise program and then a couple of moves from each workout program. And um, I really enjoyed all of them. I actually think three of my top five are in this week. So um, let's get on with the video and let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's sneak peek. So I want to start out by talking about program choices. I don't want anyone to feel overwhelmed. There is over a hundred programs to choose from. By the end of this, I just want you to feel that you have made the right decision. You need to pick your ride or die program. And what I mean by that is the one that you fall in love with, the one that speaks to you the most, the one that is going to change your life when you feel is going to change your life. This is going to be the catalyst that sets you in motion. It will be the one that you always fall back to. So if you're in the middle of doing a program and you don't really like it, this is going to end up being the program that you fall back to while you're looking for another one, while you're trying to figure out what direction you want to go to. This is always going to be the one that is in the back of your mind is going to be your favorite. Um, everybody has one. Um, I have one. It is the one that I always go back to when I don't like a program or I'm just not in a mood for a program. I shouldn't say that I don't like any of the programs. I like all of the programs. It's just some just aren't you and you know that after you've done them. Like I'm not big into the dance. Like I don't really care for Zumba. So the dancing ones really aren't my thing. Not that they aren't fun and that they aren't great. I have tried them all and they're fun, but it's just, it's just not me. It's just not my personality. So you kind of need to find that program. And some of the things to help you find the right program is going to be the first one. How long do you want to commit to a program? So we have some that are 21 days. We have some that are 28. There's 30, there's 80, there's a hundred. So any range that you want. And it's not like you can't stop doing one after 28 days. I mean, you don't like it. You don't like it. Um, but most of the time, the average I would say is 30 days. Second thing that you need to figure out is how much time do you want to spend doing a workout? So there's 20 minute workouts, there's 30, there's 50. So there's varying lengths also. So if you are one of those people that only have a short time before they have to go to work and that's when you choose to do it. I know me personally, after I get home from work, there's no way I'm exercising. There's just none. By the time I get home from work, I'm exhausted. All I want to do is eat dinner, take a shower and go to bed. So, or lay in bed and watch TV. So mine has to be done in the morning and I have tried some of the longer ones and I do not fancy getting up at five o'clock in the morning to do a 50 minute workout so that I can make it to work by eight. So I tend to stick to the 20 or 30 minute programs. That's kind of my area because it's not just working out in the morning. I have other things that I have to do in the morning. So 20 to 30 minutes is the time I have in the morning. And then what are you interested in? So there's dancing ones, there's running ones, uh, strength, uh, cardio, you name it. There is a program for it. So you just have to figure out which kind of program you're going to be interested in. You know, like I said, dancing ones are not my thing, but I am looking at um, starting the running one. One of the girls on my team, her goal is to be running by the end of the summer. So I told her that I would try the program with her, that I am not big on running, but that I was more than willing to support her and, you know, try the program along with her. And if it's not end up being a program that I like, then, you know, there's no reason why I can't continue to support her and follow her and encourage her. You know, you don't have to enjoy the program or do the program to encourage somebody else.
reaching for something, I can tell it's something important. Look how Dominique looks in the heels for Bella Bay. Love it. Now move those elbows in. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is tracking. And it's not just about weight loss. So tracking is about progress, but it's progress in weight loss. It's progress in nutrition. It's progress in mindset. And I would have to say the biggest thing that you need to track is your mindset. Because if you are not in the right frame of mind, then you are going to struggle to reach your goals. So grab a notebook, any notebook. It can be a cheap notebook you picked up at the dollar store. It can be a fancy notebook with sparkles and stickers. It doesn't really matter. You know, just do you. Do what is comfortable for you. And then you'll grow into a better system. Like I started with a notebook and it was just, you know, I'm going to give you the, the top things that I did every morning to make sure that I was in the right frame of mind. And mine has evolved since then. Like it's become this whole big tracker. Like there is a monthly plan then it breaks down into weekly plans and then it's a weekly review after then it's a month review after and it's actually a planner that my coach designed herself that i ended up uh, getting and it has actually been very very useful but i don't think when i first started i could have handled something with that much detail so i didn't get it until last month and i've been coaching for about four. So I had to work myself into it. So the number one things that you really need to be keeping track of are, so your top 10 things, and you can shorten all of these. So if, if you only want to start with five, then start with five, but it's the top things that you need to do that day. So when I started the top thing I needed to do was exercise, and then it was um, go to work and then it was make good decisions about eating at work because that one was a big one for me because people would walk in and be like, hey, we're going to go get pizza for lunch. Do you want some pizza? And of course, everyone's like, oh, yeah, of course. So now that's still something that I work on every day and then I'm going to get to the other part of what matters. So... And then, you know, it just went on from there. And then like my last thing was, it was get ready for the next day. So this is my number one piece of advice that I have is always set yourself up for the next day. So even my journal, like I set up or my, I call it my journal, but your notebook, set it up for the next day write the date, write the day, write your five things that you want to get done and you're going to want to sit at the end of your day and do the next couple of things that, um, you know, we talk about. So the next things that I do is while I'm setting myself up for the night is I write down five things that I am grateful for. And then five things that I accomplished that day. And when I first started my five accomplishment accomplishments were the five tasks I set for myself that day. And it was just, I did better or I did at work today. I ate healthy. Um, I did my workout today. I prepped myself for the next day. So I kept it very, very simple in the beginning. And then it's going to be five dreams or goals that you have. So not all of mine were weight loss based and don't make all of yours weight loss based. I actually made sure that I didn't make mine anything about weight loss. It was more of, um, I am going to complete week one 
of my exercise program. I am going to, and then long term, I am going to fit into my favorite pair of jeans. So just because I lost 20 pounds doesn't mean I can fit in my favorite pair of jeans. Or maybe it's, I only lost 10 pounds, but I can fit in my favorite pair of jeans, but the scale didn't move. Or, or that didn't, you know, but you know what I mean. So right now, um, because of my workout program, I'm not really losing a lot of weight, but I'm building a lot of muscle. And one of my goals is, was to build some muscle because I didn't really have any, um, you know, it, it's just all in what you want to do. And it's all in what you put into it. And the good thing about tracking is, so I didn't do well at work on eating. Why? Who came up to me and offered me food? Who, um, and, and then you'll track it. So is it the same person every day? Because maybe you need to have a conversation with that person and be like, hey, I'm really trying to eat better. I, I know you mean well, and let me come to you about let's go out to lunch just until I have better self-control. And I actually had to do that at work. I had one lady every day. She came in, she asked me every single day, do you want to go get something to eat? And she always offered to pay too, which made it even easier. So it's just one of those things where like I had to go and have a serious conversation with her and be like, I need you to do something for me for the next week and start small and then try not to offend. And I was just like, I need you to do me a favor for the next week. I'm really, really, really trying to um, eat better. And I feel I'm being rude if I say no, when you say, do you want to get something to eat? So for this next week, could you do me a huge favor and, um, just don't ask me, but like, I know you still want to make conversation about lunch. Ask me what I brought for lunch and you know, things like that. Like, Oh, what did you bring? You always have like good stuff to eat. And she was so very supportive in what I was doing that she did it for me. And then the next week, I asked her to do it again. And now when she comes in, it's easy for me to say, no, I brought my lunch. And then now she automatically goes, oh, what did you bring for lunch today? And then I'll tell her, she goes, oh, that sounds really delicious. You know, I wish I'd brought my lunch. And then you also start to set patterns. Now she brings her lunch, you know, two to three times a week, you know, versus never having brought her lunch. So it's just kind of tracking your behavior and the behavior around you too, because, you know, you so easily get sucked into doing what other thing people are doing without even realizing you're doing it. So, you know, it, it's very, very good to track it and make progress. Sorry, there's bugs guys, but I soaking up all this warm weather while I can. So, um, you know, you just need to be honest with it and you don't have to share it with anybody. It's not like I'm going to be asking you to post this stuff in the group. I mean, you can share all you want um, it's encouraged to share. It's encouraged to share struggles so that, you know, you can be supported if that's what you need. Um, but this is, this is you and this is you coming to terms with things. And, you know, I learned things about myself that I didn't even realize, like I had patterns and trends that I didn't realize. And when you do your week, look back, you'll notice, but when you do your month, look back, you'll notice more. You'd be like, Oh, so I'm a little bit more stressed out on Fridays than I am any other day of the week. And typically, you know, maybe most people would be more stressed out about Monday. But for me, I was more stressed out about Friday and cheated more on Friday than I did any other day because then we were going into the weekend and the staff was by themselves in the weekend. And I knew I was going to have a lot of phone calls to field and also have to take care of my grandson so that my daughter could work. So my worst day was Friday. It was easier for me to be at work. So you'll notice tracks and trends in one week. It's not always going to tell you, but a month will give you a whole entire picture. And then it's just something to work on the next month. And then now you might have another top 10 thing to do, or maybe just on Friday. So on Fridays, I now add yoga and meditation to my day. And then I also take a break at work on Friday and I do um, a meditation that because I have access to um, my coaching programs on my phone. It's an app. So I can close my door for 15 minutes and do a meditation 
exercise, and I do that every Friday now to try and help ease my stress on Fridays so that I have less chance of cheating. And it's actually worked well. But again, this is all stuff that I've been working on and tracking on. I mean, I have a notebook for January, February, well, December, January, February. Um, I just got my, you know, big planner, as I call it, March and started at March 1st. So, um, and I've actually learned a lot of things already about evaluating my March because I was tracking a little bit more things. So, um, tracking is key to success. Today we are talking about setting yourself up for success. So you just kind of need to know what your weak area is. And you might not know it right away, which is fine. You can implement these points for success at any point in time during your fitness journey. So mine is the nutrition aspect of it. And I never really had a problem working out, uh, but you have to find something that you love to do. So if you are not a person that likes working out, you have to pick a program that you like. And we talked a little bit about that on Monday in the, you know, pick your program. So that's kind of what this group is designed for. You will see multiple workouts and you will hopefully find the one that you like or one that's close and I can help you get to it. But you have to like the program. If you don't like the program, you're not going to stick with it. And if you pick a program and you sign up and you don't like it, then there's over a hundred. We can just keep finding and keep trying workouts for you until you find the one that you like. If you end up not finding one that you like, then, you know, you, you get your money back. So it's not like you're stuck. You know, you can stop your membership at any point in time if you don't feel like you found, you know, your one. And then I found mine. My favorite is job one. I absolutely job, love job one. If I ever get into a program and, you know, I don't like it or it's not for me at that time. So I recently had tried the Brazil butt lift and I just was not strong enough yet. And I, I couldn't complete the workouts. So I wasn't effectively exercising and I was not strong enough in my arms or my shoulders yet in order to do that. So I came from being very, very heavy. So I'm still building up muscle. So while I am waiting for my next program to start, I am on job one. So I'm doing job one and waiting for my next program to start. So, and this is, I mean, I've, I keep going back to job one. It is absolutely my favorite. So you just have to find the program that you love and working out will be a lot easier for you to do. You will like it. You will want to do it every day. And then the other thing is create a space. So not everybody is going to have an office or a workout room or even the ability to work out at home. I occasionally, when I am just bombarded at home where it's, you know, everybody's coming at me from different sides. There's occasions where I go to the gym. I still have a gym membership because I want the pool, the sauna, the hot tub. So I typically go to the gym on Saturday and Sunday and I will walk on the track and then I will go into the hot sauna and then I will walk a couple laps in the pool and then sit in the hot tub. So I still use my gym membership, but there's days where like, I just can't focus at home. So I go to the gym put my program on my phone with my earbuds in and I just do the program at the gym. And then, Hey, bonus, 
I can go to the hot tub still afterwards. So it's just all in kind of how you look at it, but you need some kind of space at home, whether it's just a piece of wall space. So I have a lot of, so this is the wall space I have, and that's like all of my nutrition stuff. Um, and then over there on the wall is like my, my weight chart and then my calendar for my current workout that I'm doing so that I can actually check it off every day and feel accomplished that I got it done. So I check it off every day. So I have my nutrition over on this side so that when I'm meal prepping, which we're going to get into, um, when I'm meal prepping, it's there. I can look at my list. I can see I can get up and I can pace and think, oh God, what am I going to do? What I'm going to do? And then I can look at my list and look at my list. And then my workout, it's there. I face it every day when I work out. So you don't necessarily have to have an office. Um, I just happen to have an office now because my, my daughter moved out. Um, so now we have the, the guest room, which eventually this will have a bed in it and like a small little dresser, you know, when we get to that point but it can still be my office and it's, it, you know, it's not a really big deal, but you have to have a space. So get some wall space. It, it could be your bathroom. It could be your bedroom, just a space where you can put some stuff on the wall to keep yourself on track. So you need a place to hang your workout calendar. You don't necessarily need a place to hang all of your nutrition stuff, but it's helpful for me. The other place that I have it is I have it on the side of my fridge. So whatever you're going to do, whether it's going to be the portion fix or the to be mindset, I put that stuff on the side of my fridge so like I can just look at it right away. Like if I'm questioning whether or not something is a carb or a vegetable or a fruit or a carb, it's right, it's right there. I don't, I don't have to guess. I don't have to pull my phone out. I don't have to do anything other than just look at my fridge. And then the other part is, is the meal prep. So meal prep is not for everybody. And I don't always do full meal prep to where like I make meals. So sometimes like I'll make a soup and I'll eat that throughout the week. Uh, lately, um, just because my tastes are just all over the place and I'm really, you know, always struggling with texture or taste or like one week, something tastes good. And the next week, like it literally makes me gag. And same thing with textures. I try to just prep certain things. So like I will prep myself to proteins, which for me, it's usually chicken and it's always chicken. I always have chicken prepped. And my husband just on Sunday, he will go and grill a bunch of pieces of chicken for me in various different seasonings that I have put on them. Usually um, my go-to is flavor God because they're gluten-free. Um, and I might do steak. I might do Italian sausage. Um, I don't usually pre- prep like pork chops or pork tenderloin just because for me they get a little like tough and my husband always cooks my steak like like just just done and then quite a bit of like pink still left in it so that when I go to make it the next day when I'm warming it up I'm not killing it and making it tough so I recommend two proteins and then um, chop up your vegetables so that way they are ready they're there they're to go I chop up my celery. I put it in a mason jar, add water. My celery is ready to go. If I have um, onions and peppers, like I chop those up and I have those ready to go. And then um, like I'll do like one of my carbs. So if I'm doing potatoes, I will dice up some potatoes and I will cook those up. Or if I'm doing baked potatoes, I don't tend to do that. I can throw them in the Instapot and it's not a big deal, but like know that you're doing potatoes, rice. Um, I have a rice cooker. I mm, use it, don't use it. Um, but I, I have rice prep too. So sometimes I do both rice and potatoes. So sometimes I'm prepping two cups of rice. Sometimes I'm prepping one cup of rice. So keep it simple and then you can throw different things together. So if I've got veggies prepped, I can throw veggies, some soy sauce and some chicken in the pan and have it over rice. Or I can, I have frozen vegetables too, which I actually use a lot. So I can last minute make some chicken fried rice where I can throw some rice, a bag of the peas and carrots or a handful of the peas and carrots with um, some of the rice in a pan with some soy sauce. Um, 
even Mexican. Um, I have gluten-free tortillas. I usually tend to not even really use those, but I'll take a pepper and I will put the pepper, like I, I do a bunch of different varieties of how I prep the pup the peppers. So some of them I'll leave them to where I can throw some stuff on it and eat it almost like a nacho. And then some I will dice, some I will just cut into strips, you know, things like that. So I usually always prep my pepper three different ways. Um, so there's always, you know, really easy and quick. I mean, and now there's sometimes where I don't that night I, or day, I don't use any of that and I actually make something to eat. So you know, you have those options too. Like if I did not have a long shift at work and I actually made it home on time and, um, I have time to cook and I do have freezer meals, um, pre-made for, uh, the boys too. So like if I did, um, I had the bangers in the freezer bag and all they're going to do is make some mashed potatoes to go with it. I'll probably just make a side of vegetables and have that with them because I made the gravy gluten-free or, you know, something like that. So I don't always need my meal prep. I, I more need it for lunch so that the night before I can throw the stuff together that I'm going to have for lunch and get it ready for. All I have to do is grab it out of the fridge in the morning and go to work. And it's one less thing for me to worry about in the morning. And then I am more not guaranteed. I'm more likely to be successful with what I eat at work because it's typically work where I failed most. So you just have to look at the different things and it might take you a little bit. Like I said, that's why you're doing the tracking, which we talked about yesterday. So you just have to figure out where your holes are going to be, where your struggles are going to be, where you're going to need the most pampering to succeed. And if you're not sure, just keep tracking and trending and you'll notice where your holes are and you'll notice where you need to fix things. And then, you know, you just make a plan, shout some stuff out to the group. You know, we can help you try and figure out some things that might help. Thank you. 
fun alignment. And reach out. Reestablish width to the foot. And shift in. Ward off. Turning the hips all the way in. Roll out. Knee and palm down. Back and palm up. And pull back and down. Shifting back into stance. Turning the hips to 45. Serving weighted foot rolls. Now back hand comes up to front. With the press. All right, today we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, getting in the right mind frame. So this is kind of like what we talked about yesterday, um, but this one is some tips on how to get in the right mind frame. So not all of these are going to be for everybody, but hopefully one of them will um, resonate with you and help you. So my first tip is pick your theme song. Pick your song that is going to pump you up. Pick the song that when you are in a bad mood, it never fails to pick up your spirits and put you in a good mood. So I have three. Cupid Shuffle, Uptown Funk, and Funky Cold Medina. I have no idea why, but every time I put on the Cupid Shuffle, I can't help but to start kind of half-ass dancing in my seat or tapping my foot or something like that. Same thing with the other two songs. It's just, those are my three go-to songs. And if I get up in the morning and I am dragging, all I have to do is put on one of those three songs and I'm literally dancing to my workout equipment and, you know, shaking it while I get my program up on the screen. So find your theme song. walk um but you could do some stretches um anything simple jog in place for a few minutes do some jumping jacks um 
meditate. I've done it to where um, I was just in a really bad funk. I picked a meditation program that um, is an upbeat, uplifting one. And then I am in a better frame of mind for the rest of my day. Uh, tip three, we talked about this a little bit too. Get a vision board um, or a get your head out of your ass board as I like to call mine. Both of them are great tools. Put them in your workspace. Put them on your bathroom mirror. I have a couple of things I printed that are on my bathroom mirror where I have to walk past it every morning in order to get into my workout clothes. And it just, you know, there's some funny ones like it's too people outside today. I want to stay in bed. And then the one below it says, you know, get, get out of bed, you know, do your shit. So it's, you know, just you kind of got to set yourself up again. Where it's like we talked about before setting yourself up to succeed. Um, fourth tip, get a pre-workout drink. You know, take 15 minutes, sip it like you're sipping your coffee. Um, I try not to do coffee that much, but when I, the days that I drink my pre-workout, I really don't need coffee and, you know, maybe sit there and sip it while you go over your daily list that you wrote yourself the night before, cause you're setting yourself up for success. Get that pre-workout in your heart will start pumping and you'll start to feel good and you'll do your workout. Uh, tip five. Lean on your team for support. You know, that's what your team is there for. And right now we're just doing the sneak peek, but consider us your team. And if you have, you know, um, something that's going on and, and you you don't want to work out, bounce it off some people. If, you know, you're like, God, I just, I don't like working out in the morning, but by the time I get home, I don't feel like working out. Put that in the group chat. I'm sure you'll get a ton of ideas that will be like, you know, hey, you know, do you get to take a long lunch at work? Can you run to the gym at lunch and do a quick workout with your phone? Or can you run home to a quick workout? Um, I'm fairly lucky. I mean, I if I only had a half an hour lunch, I wouldn't be able to run home. But if I had like an hour lunch, I'd be able to run home, do my 20 workout minute workout and run back to work. Um, you know, because I live about 15 minutes away from work. And, um, so, but again, you know, use your team for support and, you know, maybe you just are having a bad morning. Like can't tell you how many times I've gotten out of bed and I've stepped foot in a freaking hairball from one of my cats. And it just kind of sets your morning off. You need a bitch, go throw a comment in the chat and be like, God, you guys, I just stepped in a freaking hairball and it just shit on my day. You know, and I'm sure you're going to get a ton of cat memes that are like, get over it. Or you're going to get some cat memes of like them hacking up some hairballs, but all of them will probably make you laugh and then you'll feel better and you'll go about your day, you know, and, or maybe you just need to bitch and, you know, like, you know, God, you know, I woke up at four o'clock in the morning and I didn't want to wake up at four o'clock in the morning and who knows, you know, but that's what your team is there for. I can't tell you how many times that you know, I've had a bad day and I go into my team's group chat and I'm like, God, you guys like, Jesus, what is going on today? And they will send me funny memes or be like, you know, the little caring hug thing that you can send now. And, you know, I just feel better automatically. And it's just great to have support, especially when you are struggling to get into the mind frame of, I need to get up and work out and get my shit together. So those are my five tips. And like I said, they might not work for everybody, you know, like tip five, you might not feel like you want to be that whiner or that complainer. Um, I didn't do it at first, but I also noticed that I was able to do my workouts, but I was still struggling with the food part of it. And I noticed once I started like picking the brains of other people on my team, like, Hey, like, I just don't know what to eat anymore. And there's this whole big thing. And, um, We'll probably get into that at some point about decision fatigue. Like you just get so tired of having to make decisions, whether it is your workout or it is eating. And um, we'll talk about that a little bit more with, you know, meal prep and stuff like that of how to make it simple without having to eat the same thing every day but that you can quickly and easily do things. And that was actually something that I had learned about from one of the girls in my team was, 
you know, um, a really good tip for meal prep. And we'll talk about meal prep and all that stuff a little bit later. So hopefully these five tips help you out. You can just move. You know when you at a party or you at the wedding and you just something like this. Ah, let's get a little lower, y'all. Because that's how you work the muscles. Do you feel so good? It's my turn. Right? No, but I'll let you come out of that clear, right? What color is that? Two, one step side to side here. Blue. Blue. All right. Mm -hmm. We're about to cameo. She's with you. All right, so we are wrapping up our sneak peek, and hopefully you guys have found your ride or die program. So now that you have chosen your program, it's time to pick your start date. You can start immediately. You can start this coming Monday. That will give you the weekend to go grocery shopping and set up your workspace. If you need a little bit more time, no problem. You can still sign up and start looking through the um, nutrition stuff and start looking through the programs and I can continue to work with you to find a program that you like. Um, so we have another sneak peek coming next week. So if you didn't find something that you like, then um, I can get you in the sneak peek for next week. And, you know, we'll just keep plugging away at this until we find you your ride or die program. You know, I don't want you to settle. So you got to like it and it's out there. So we will find it together. And if you saw a workout that looks close, but it wasn't quite right, just message me and we can figure out the right one for you. And if you found it, let's get you signed up and started and get you on this amazing team and get you going.
All right, guys. <clears throat> That's 10 rounds. Um, I always feel like Rocky after that one. Um, still sweating. Um, I love this one. I feel like I need to go run around and scream Adrian. Um, so if you guys have any questions about this one, let me know. All right, guys, that wraps up this week's video. So next week will be a sneak peek for cardio workouts. So I had a lot of fun doing this week. Um, the bar blend was one of my all-time favorites. It made me feel very beautiful and elegant. Um, country heat was good. I'm just not very coordinated, but it was still a lot of fun. Um, 10 rounds amazing. Like I felt like Rocky Balboa just going and, you know, Adrian, you know, in the role running scene and stuff. Um, that one was amazing. The Tai Chi, I really like the flow and the movement of it where it was like the, and you know, this, and I really did like it. It was um, a lot of fun and it's probably something like I would do as like a rest leap relax day for me. It's by no means relaxing or, um, easy, but it feels very calming and almost like meditation. So I would probably do that on like a Saturday or Sunday after I've done it, like a week of exercises and then the let's get it up. So that one is another, it's another dancing one, but he is just so funny and he is hilarious. And it was amazing. Even though I couldn't do all of the moods because I'm not very coordinated, I was still able to modify them and keep moving. And this has probably been my favorite week so far of the sneak peeks. If you guys have any questions about, um, my programs or any of the ones you saw here, just message me and let me know. And I can get you guys some more information. A lot of these have sample workouts that I could send to you guys. So just let me know.